Greetings friends, David Marks here with a very specific video tutorial for some of you today. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to migrate all of your images from a Lightroom Classic catalog over to the new cloud-based type of Adobe Lightroom. The migration process that I'm going to cover here is not very hard, but you need to know that this migration is meant to be a one-way street. If you decide to go down this road, then you need to be aware that there isn't an easy way to reverse course. With these warnings in mind, if you're ready to make the transition from Adobe Photoshop Lightroom Classic to the new cloud-based Adobe Lightroom ecosystem, then let's jump right in and let's get started. To begin today's lesson, I want to show you the migration tool that we're going to use at the end of this video. We'll eventually use this feature to pull all of the images from my Adobe Photoshop Lightroom Classic catalog into my Adobe Creative Cloud account. The tool is here, but we can't start with this button because there are some preparations that must be made before we can begin this migration process. Since most of the work that we need to do before we can use this tool happens over in Adobe Photoshop Lightroom Classic, I'm gonna quit out of the cloud-based version of Lightroom for now. Next, I'm gonna open up my Adobe Photoshop Lightroom Classic catalog. Once Lightroom Classic opens, the most important thing that we need to do is to make sure that all of our images are currently available. Photos that are offline or missing in this Lightroom Classic catalog will not be transferred and the missing images cannot be uploaded to our online storage account. So the first thing we've got to do is to track down or remove all the missing images in this catalog. If you have a folder like this one, for example, with a question mark on it, and if this folder contains a bunch of important images, then we absolutely must fix this broken link. Let's say, for example here, that you had moved this folder from one place to another on your hard drive. When you did this, whenever you move things around that this Lightroom catalog is tracking and you move them outside of this program, then the path that this catalog has recorded to this folder gets broken. Fortunately, if you know where this folder went, then it's easy to open up this flyout menu with a right click and then to use the find missing folder command to update the path. Once this Lightroom catalog knows where this folder is, then the question mark goes away and those images are no longer missing. Likewise, if you're storing your images on an external hard drive, and if that hard drive is not plugged in, then Lightroom Classic cannot access your original images. If your Lightroom catalog indexes files on more than one hard drive, then make sure that all those drives are active before proceeding. Once all your drives are up and running, and once there are no question marks on any of these folders, then I'm going to use the library find missing photos command to make sure that there are no missing images in this catalog. If I continue to have missing images, then I would want to track them all down or remove them from this catalog before proceeding. Once you are sure that nothing is missing, the next step is to optimize this catalog. Fortunately, this step is super easy. All you have to do is go File, Optimize Catalog. Depending upon the size of your catalog, this step might take a little while, but there's nothing else that you need to do until this process completes. Next, there are certain features in Adobe Photoshop Lightroom Classic that are not available in the cloud-based version of Lightroom. If you haven't used any of these features, then you can skip ahead to the next section of the tutorial. But if you've used features like slideshows, books, and print packages here in Classic, then these features will not migrate directly. Just to be clear, the images that you might have used in a slideshow or a book will be migrated, but the project itself, this slideshow for example, cannot be migrated over because the cloud-based Lightroom does not have this type of feature. So if you've put a lot of work into a project, like a slideshow or the book module, then be sure to export a copy of your finished product before proceeding. If this slideshow, my finished project, for example, was important, then I would definitely want to click here to open up this project and then render it out as a video that I could then play after the migration. I'm not going to slow things down here and actually render this one as a video, but hopefully you get the idea. Next, if you have any images where you used Adobe Photoshop Lightroom Classics snapshot feature, 
in the develop module to store multiple looks for a single image, then you might need to take an additional step or two. On this photo, for example, I've saved both a black and white look and a color look as snapshot. If I click back and forth here in the snapshots panel, then you can see these two different versions. Now, snapshots are a nice feature in Adobe Photoshop Lightroom Classic, but unfortunately, they don't translate over to the cloud-based type of Lightroom. So, if you have snapshots that matter, then you'll want to find those images, bring them into the develop module, and then click on each snapshot that you want to save. Once you've clicked on the name of the snapshot, like this black and white split tone, and then you can go photo, create virtual copy. Create a snapshot for each virtual copy that matters. And then when you go G for grid again, you should see two different images, one with this little page upturned symbol in the bottom and one without, or more if you had more than one snapshot. Now, although snapshots won't transfer over, virtual copies will. That was easy. And again, if you've never used this feature in Classic, then you have nothing to fear here. Finally, in the library module, we want to check for one more potential problem. If you've been organizing your images using a date for your folder structure, which is what I've always recommended, then you don't need to make any changes here. The cloud-based version of Adobe Lightroom automatically uses a date-driven structure to separate what you shot on one day from what you shot on another. Lightroom Cloudy's interface looks a little different than what you see here, but it functions the same as these date-driven folders. On the other hand, if you have folders like these, where you've given them a meaningful name, if you've built a folder structure that involves words rather than dates, then you might need to take this additional step before you proceed with the big migration. If you have folders like these, then I recommend right-clicking on your top-level folder. When this flyout menu appears, choose the option that says Create Collection Set, and then whatever the name of that folder is. We are using this command so that Adobe Photoshop Lightroom Classic will create a set of collections to mimic your folder structure. The reason that we're doing this is because we can migrate collections from Classic to Lightroom Cloudy. They'll be called albums, but they're one and the same. But there is no equivalent for folders in Lightroom Cloud-based. So if you skip this step, and if you've spent a lot of time putting images into folders with names, then all that work would be lost. Fortunately, it's easy to prevent that problem by using this create collection set command, and that completes all of the changes that we need to make before we return to Adobe Lightroom Cloud-based for the last steps in the migration. There is just one more thing that we need to know, though, before we quit out of Lightroom Classic. The last thing that we need to do is to find the exact name and file path that leads through your computer to this Lightroom catalog. Fortunately, that's easy to find if we open up the catalog settings menu. PC folks, you'll find catalog settings under edit. Mac folks, you'll find this one by going up to the word Lightroom Classic on the menu bar and then down to catalog settings. In here, we want to go to the General tab. The info that we need to know is all right here at the top of this box. Take a moment here to write down the exact name and the path to this .lrcat file. We'll need this info in just a second, so once you're clear on where this catalog actually lives, you can close this window. Next, you can completely quit or exit out of Lightroom Classic. Now we can relaunch the Adobe Lightroom cloud-based application. When the cloud-based Adobe Lightroom opens, we need to visit its preference menus. PC folks, you'll find this one under Edit Preferences. Mac folks, for you, the path is up to the words Adobe Lightroom on the menu bar and then down to Preferences. In here, let's go to the General tab first. And let's just check that this setting the one that says prevent system sleep during sync while connected to power is indeed enabled. When this setting is active, Lightroom will try to keep your computer awake while it is uploading files to Adobe servers. If this switch were turned off, nothing bad would happen. But since we know that Lightroom is about to start a big upload, it makes sense to me that we would try to get that upload job done as quickly as possible and having the computer go to sleep wouldn't really help us. Next, let's click on the Local Storage tab. 
In here, some of you might not need to make any changes at all, and others might need to make a big change. If the Lightroom catalog that you are about to migrate contains a relatively small number of photos, and if the internal hard drive inside of this computer has plenty of free space, then you don't need to make any changes in here at all. If, on the other hand, you are about to migrate over thousands and thousands of photos, then we need to think carefully about how much free space you can afford to use for this project on your computer's internal hard drive. The reason that we need to stop and do some thinking here has to do with the way that the cloud-based version of Adobe Lightroom actually works. Whenever you import new images into Adobe Lightroom, then a copy of all of those photos gets stored temporarily inside of your computer. We can tell Lightroom to prune these temporary copies away once they have all been uploaded to Adobe servers. But in the beginning, there must be enough free space for Lightroom Cloudy to store a copy of all those photos on your hard drive until the upload completes. This can be a big problem if you're about to migrate over a huge image library and if your computer doesn't have a ton of free space on its internal hard drive. So, if you find yourself in the position where you're about to migrate thousands of images, and if you don't think that your computer's internal hard drive has enough room to hold all those temporary copies, then there are two changes that you should make in here. First, set this option, the one that says photo cache size, all the way down to zero. Trust me, we can always bring this setting back up to the default value of 25, or something higher if we want, after the upload completes. But setting this one to zero for now tells Adobe Lightroom to use as little space as possible on your computer's internal hard drive. Next, if you're worried that the free space for the upload is going to be an issue, then you'll want to connect an external hard drive to your computer. You do not need to use a fancy external hard drive for this project. The brand name, the drive speed, those things make little difference here. How big an external hard drive you need depends on the size of the Lightroom Classic image library that you're about to migrate. If, for example, if it takes a terabyte of space to store all of the images that you currently have in Lightroom Classic, then you're going to need an external hard drive that has at least one terabyte of free space to complete the migration. Let me make it clear that once everything has been uploaded, to Adobe servers. Then you can detach or delete that external hard drive, but that's a topic for another video. Anyway, once you have a sufficiently large external hard drive connected to your computer, then you wanna click here where it says store a copy of all originals at the specified location. Next, click here where it says browse, and when this dialog box appears, guide Lightroom over to the external hard drive that you want to use for your staging area. Next, if you've changed things in here, you'll need to hit Done, and you'll need to restart Lightroom. Now that our preferences are all set, and now that we have plenty of free space, we can begin the migration. To do that, I'm gonna go up here to the file, Migrate From, Adobe Lightroom Classic Command. I'll click through these intro boxes a few times, and now I need to lead the cloud-based type of Lightroom to the classic catalog that I want to migrate. When this box appears, you can either choose the option that says the name of your Lightroom catalog if it's on the list, or you can tap on this browse button to be absolutely certain that we are going to the right catalog. If needed, lead it down the complete path that you wrote down a few minutes ago. Once you've found the correct .lrcat file, tap on the Migrate button, and then the one that says Start Scan. And if you've done all your prep work, then eventually this box should report that there are no missing images. Once you get to this stage, there's nothing left to do but to tap on the Start Migration button and then to wait. The waiting time here will depend upon how many photos you're migrating, but eventually you'll get to this screen, and when you hit Done, you'll be back to Adobe Lightroom's main screen. And now all of these new images are being uploaded to Adobe servers. That's what this little blue circle here in the bottom corner means, or this symbol up here over the little cloud. Now, how long this upload will take also depends on the number of images that you're migrating and the speed of your internet connection. If you have thousands of images, then the upload might take hours or days 
You don't have to wait for everything to upload before you quit out of Lightroom. If I were to quit out of this program right now and then restart the program later, then the upload to Adobe servers would pick up right where it left off. I also don't have to wait for all of these images to upload before I can start working on these images. You must, however, wait for the entire upload to complete before you disconnect that external hard drive if you needed one. And I would definitely wait until you're sure that everything has been successfully uploaded before you erase anything from Lightroom Classic. It's on this note that I'm going to bring this tutorial to a close. If you've gone through all these steps, and once you are 100% certain that everything has been safely uploaded, then you could go back and delete your old Lightroom Classic catalog. I'm not saying that you must do this, but let's face it, once you migrate everything to the cloud, then Lightroom Classic is no longer the program for you. Finally, throughout this video, I've assumed that you're only using one Adobe Photoshop Lightroom Classic catalog. If you're one of those poor, misguided Lightroom Classic users who believe that multiple catalogs would somehow improve your workflow, then you're going to need to repeat everything that we just did for each and every catalog that you're currently using. If you have multiple Adobe Photoshop Lightroom Classic catalogs, the workflow here remains the same. You just have to repeat all of these steps catalog by catalog until you get everything up to the cloud. I hope that you found this video helpful. If you learned something today, then please hit the subscribe button and leave us a like or a comment down below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in our next tutorial.